Hi, you guys, it's Yaz. And today what I want to talk about is why can't narcissists, you know, after they discarded you or they treated you lousy, why can't they finally come clean? A narcissist will never come clean. Why can't they give you closure, okay? Very rarely will a narcissist come out and tell you, I know I hurt you. It actually happened to me where I was dealing with a narcissist, a malignant narcissist, and towards the end of the relationship, when he realized that, you know, he couldn't manipulate me anymore, he finally came out and said, well, I know I hurt you. And see, this, this is also a sign, too, that narcissists are aware of when they're hurting you, but their need for whatever supply they're trying to get out of you surpasses any kind of empathy that they could ever feel for you. Okay. They know that they're hurting you. A lot of the times they know they're hurting you and some do it deliberately and some do it just because they're trying to get a supply and you get hurt along the way. But what happens is a lot of people try to get closure afterwards. A lot of people are broken and you know, they just want closure. They just want the narcissist to admit that they're wrong. Okay. And they won't get it. Most of the time, you won't get that closure from a narcissist. They're not going to come back at you and say, you know, I'm sorry, I cheated on you, I lied to you, and everything like that. They will deny to the end, to the end, okay? Why? Because they don't want to face shame, and they also want you to have that doubt in your mind that you're wrong, okay? And they also want everybody else to look at it like you're crazy for assuming that they did something wrong to you. See, narcissists are very worried about their image. They can't deal with shame. So if they were to admit to you that they did something to you that, you know, was shameful, then they're worried that you're going to go around, you're going to talk about it, it's going to make them look bad, that there's something wrong with them. So that's why a lot of narcissists too, what they'll do is, they get into other relationships and they post on social media, you know, about how happy they are and how great things are. It's all a facade to try to make you look bad that there was something wrong with you. That's why the relationship didn't work out. Now look at me. I'm with this person and I can be in a healthy relationship. So the problem wasn't me. The problem was you. And this is what a narcissist is going to do. They're going to try to pin it on you that you were the problem for whatever toxic behavior they did. And understand this, whatever a narcissist does, they will project it onto you. So if a narcissist is a liar, they're going to call you a liar. If a narcissist is cheating, they're going to accuse you of cheating. All right. That's why I tell people, if somebody accuses you of cheating and you haven't given them any reason to think that you've cheated, chances are that that narcissist is cheating on you, okay? And what they're going to do is they're going to project that shame onto you and accuse you of cheating, and it also deflects any kind of blame off them, okay? So that you sit there and you're defending yourself. Now you're defending yourself when it should be the narcissist who's defending their self. But what a narcissist does is their greatest defense is an offense. And this is why they always flip the blame on you. And they will drive you crazy unless you can spot what they're doing. And when you're in it, when you're in the thick of a narcissistic relationship, number one, either you don't know how narcissists act, so you can't spot it. You're just saying to yourself, why are they doing this? You know, why are they accusing me of all these things? They're the one doing it. Why are they blatantly lying to me when I have the proof right in front of them? And you could have the proof right in front of a narcissist and they still will blatantly lie and say, you know, it didn't happen or you've got it wrong or, you know, I don't know where you got that from, you know, that, you know, so your friend saw me cheating or something like that. Your friend's just trying to start trouble. They'll have something to say about anything to refute your argument. Okay. So they will never take ownership. They will never take accountability and you will never get that closure. Your closure is your common sense that they did what they did. And that's why you've got to make it clear in your mind exactly what was done. And this is the problem. 
This is what causes that cognitive dissonance because a lot of people, they look back on the relationship and they say, well, you know, they were nice at times. Maybe I've got this wrong. Maybe I was controlling. Maybe I was attacking them. Maybe I was asking too many questions. And see, that's another thing that a narcissist will do. They will say that you are controlling if you ask them questions about things. Like in other words, let's say you ask them, where were you last night? And they say, why do you keep asking me? You know, what are you, what are you a private eye? I have to answer to you. You have no trust or something like that. So what they're doing, again, they're flipping it back onto you that there's something wrong with you instead of, you know, giving you, you know, security in the relationship to make you feel like, you know what, they're not doing anything wrong. But a narcissist, you know, they want to create doubt in your mind. So you will never, ever get that closure from the narcissist and you shouldn't even try to, okay? You shouldn't even try to get closure from that narcissist because what you're doing is you're wasting your time and you're also showing the narcissist that you doubt yourself, okay? Because for you to have to sit there and try to get clarity out of the narcissist for them to admit what they did is showing there's doubt, okay? That you need that reassurance of them saying and validating you that they are wrong instead of trusting your own judgment and saying, you know, you know what? I know what I saw. I know what I heard. And this is toxic. And you know what? The way I handle that is I'm not around this person. I distance myself from somebody who doesn't speak the truth or who doesn't, you know, is not a straight arrow. I'm not going to deal with a shady person. I'm not going to deal with somebody who isn't transparent. And the key, you guys, is transparency. So when you're dealing with somebody who cannot answer you, answer a question, a straight question, yes and no, and you're, you've, get, you've got all this word salad, or they deflect to another you know, issue or something like that, they get off topic, you know you're dealing with a shady person because they're not answering you outright, okay? They are you know, deflecting so that they don't have to answer the question and they're trying to confuse you. They're trying to confuse your mind, all right? So you've got to know your facts. You've got to be focused when dealing with a narcissist and you've got to know your boundaries, what you'll accept and what you won't accept. And what you'll accept should be that you should be respected so that if you're treating a person a certain way, they should reciprocate reciprocate in the same manner. And if they can't, then you don't need to be in a relationship with somebody like that because that's not somebody who's respecting you and that's not somebody that can love you, okay? If they can't respect you, they can never love you. And that's when I get into this topic where people say, but I love the narcissist. What did you love about the narcissist? They lie to you. They gaslit you. You know, some of them cheat. Not all narcissists cheat, but some of them cheated on you. They played games with your head. What is there to love about that narcissist? No, what you loved was when the narcissist was nice. Or what you loved was the fact that you were very attracted to that narcissist, maybe sexually attracted to that narcissist, and you loved that chemistry that you had with them because they were playing into it. They were playing into it. But what is the intent? The intent with the narcissist is not about love. It's about something else. It could be about lust. They were lusting you. It could be about money. They were trying to get money out of you. It could just be the fact that they love that you're sweating them, okay? But let's get back to the topic at hand. You know, when you're trying to get that closure out of that narcissist, when you find out that you're finally, you finally realize, you know what? I'm dealing with a toxic person. You don't have to justify yourself to this person. Their opinion means nothing, because they are toxic. And so many people feel the need to have to go to the narcissist and tell them off. You're this, you're a liar. You played me and everything like that. What you're doing is you're giving that narcissist satisfaction. Don't do it. What you do is you leave 
you leave a narcissist cold. That's the best way to leave a narcissist is cold and confused. Okay. Let them wonder why you left them. Okay. That not that you have to sit there and explain yourself to them of what they did. They know what they did. You don't have to point it out to them of what they did. Okay. And what you're showing when you walk away cold is that they are no longer important in your life. Okay. That it is done. It's a wrap. You're moving on in your life and you're focusing in on your future and you're building relationships with other people that will make you happy. You leave them in the dirt where they belong in the dirt with their secrets and especially a covert narcissist. I had done a reel on this and it's so true. When you deal with a covert narcissist, and if you have a lot of experience like I do, because I've dealt with so many of them, not just ex-romantic partners, I've dealt with them in family, I've dealt with them in friends, I've dealt with a lot of covert narcissists. That's why I know it like the back of my hand. Any covert narcissist that you deal with is going to have secrets that they withhold from you. And you won't know it at the time of the relationship that you have with them. Later on, you'll find things out about them. Like for instance, one of the covert narcissists that I dealt with, I didn't find out till over 10 years later that this covert narcissist was hiding money, okay? I didn't know that this covert narcissist was triangulating with their family and keeping secrets, okay? That's one covert narcissist that I dealt with that I was married to and in a relationship over 13 years, there were a lot of secrets, okay? When I had a covert narcissistic friend who pretended to be my best friend, I didn't find out till later, years later, that she was, you know, sexting with somebody that I was dating. I didn't find that out till later, okay? So covert narcissists always have secrets. And the other reason that they have secrets is because it makes them feel superior to you. They know something that you don't. See, narcissists are all about deceit. They love deceit. They think they're clever. They think they're smarter than you because they're shady. And when you're a transparent person, when you're a truth teller, okay, you speak the truth, they look at you like you're a sucker because you wear your heart on your sleeve and you show your hand, whereas they're more clever because they don't tell people what they're thinking. That's the covert narcissist. They don't tell you what they're thinking. They only give you drips and drabs and you see that blank look on their face where they're not going to divulge to you what they're truly thinking. A covert narcissist will never let you know what they're truly thinking. They hide their feelings, but you'll know it later on because they plot against you and they talk about you behind your back. And that's when you're going to be able to spot it and say, this person's a shady person. They're not in my corner. They don't have my back. They're smiling to my face and stabbing me in the back. And that's exactly what a covert narcissist does. They smile to your face and, and then they stab you in the back. So the point of all this, you guys, is that when you have a falling out, okay, and you feel like, you know what? I just want to let them have it. I just want to tell them off. They don't care, number one. They don't care. It's not like they're going to sit there and they're going to, you know, you know, tell you, oh, you know, I'm sorry and everything like that. They'll, they'll, they'll never admit that they did anything wrong because they can't face shame. They're always going to flip it on you and say that you're crazy, you're sensitive, you take things to heart, you're negative, you're always bringing things up from the past. And let me bring this one topic up, okay, because it's a hot topic. People talk about, and it's a common thing that narcissists do, they always say, you keep bringing up the past. Why can't you just let the past go? Well, when you acknowledge what you did in the past, then you'll let it go. But the narcissist is not acknowledging what they did in the past because they don't want to face shame and they don't want to answer to you. So they rather just let it go so that they never have to, you know, face the, you know, accountability or anything like that. 
So narcissists love to do that. Oh, why do you keep bringing up the past? They love to sweep things under the rug. And especially the covert narcissists do this all the time. And when you keep bringing up the past, they're going to say things like, oh, you know, there's something wrong with you. You just can't let things go. Oh, you're so sensitive. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, you need mental help or something. No. Okay. I don't need mental help. I need you to take accountability for your actions. Okay. And this is exactly what they'll do. And this is like, you know, they'll also say you're an angry person because you get passionate about it because you're being lied to, but your feelings are justified. Understand that if you're feeling a certain way, there's a reason you feel that way. If you're angry, it's because you're hurt because that narcissist has hurt you. So your feelings are valid. But a narcissist is going to try to invalidate your feelings and say there's something wrong with you and it's all deflection so that they don't have to take accountability. So back to the point at hand, when you're trying to get that closure from the narcissist, don't do it because you're going to give them satisfaction. Not only will they not care, you're going to give them satisfaction because they got to you. Even if a narcissist gets to you and, you know, it's so easy for them to trigger you. That's why you go no contact because these people will always trigger you. All right. But they will constantly trigger you. You have to stay in control of your emotions. And especially if you're going through a wicked divorce or something like that, you want to stay calm in a courtroom so that, you know, you focus in purely on the facts. And I tell this to people that are co-parenting with a narcissist, which I've had to do over 17 years. All right. So the bottom line is you stick to the facts. Okay. You're not going to get your emotions into everything. You're going to stick to exactly what the children need. All right. And you want to look stable and especially in front of a judge. You don't want to look like you're falling to pieces or you're emotional that you can't handle things. You want to show confidence, you guys. You know, if you want to cry behind closed doors, that's one thing. But don't ever let the narcissist know you're sweating because they thrive on that. They're like sharks that smell blood. So never let a narcissist know that they got to you. And this is another reason why your closure should just be walking away cold. Because when you have to confront the narcissist and you're letting them have it, just you letting them have it is giving them supply that now they know they upset you. And that makes a narcissist feel good. They upset you. Why? because it shows you care. They got to you. Okay. They have that power of getting to you. So you show that narcissist, they ain't nothing. Okay. They're nothing. If anything, you put on a smile and you live your life and you live your best life. And you don't give that narcissist one ounce of space in your mind. You have to refocus your brain and say to yourself, you know what? Let me not waver here. I know this person is toxic. Just because they show niceness from time to time doesn't mean I'm dealing with a nice person. You know, even the most wicked people in the world, serial killers can be the nicest people in the world at times. If you ever seen documentaries on serial killers and what their neighbors say about them, oh, they were the nicest guy. Oh, I can't believe they're a serial killer or something like that. Because a narcissist knows how to manipulate people to show themselves as being a good person, okay? Especially the covert narcissist. They know how to put on a good face when they're out in public so that everybody thinks they're the good guy and what they're doing is making you look like the bad guy. If you ever have anything to say about them, now you look like you're attacking them. You're the problem, not them, because they've manipulated these other people to like them and these other people don't know you know, the true beast of the covert narcissist, so they're not gonna know. They've been manipulated, you guys. So don't, you know, don't try to get closure from these people. Just let them go, let them go destroy themselves. And a covert narcissist, a narcissist, they will destroy themselves 
because, you know, they don't do things according to the book. They do things in a shady way and eventually it's going to catch up to them. And somebody said on one of the posts, oh, you know, they never get their karma. They get their karma. Believe me when I tell you, it takes years. Later on, they get their karma, okay? Because they've screwed so many people over or, you know, they weren't there for people. People don't forget and they're left alone or they're left bitter and they don't have the resources that they had. And, they, you know, they get worse with age, okay? They get worse with age. If they have money, they'll do a little better than the poor narcissist. Because a narcissist that has money, there will always be people that'll be around them just trying to get their money out of them. But the, the, the regular narcissist that doesn't have anything, no supply at all, they're going to be very bitter, very, very angry, and they're going to left, you know, they're going to be left with, you know, that hollowness. They always have hollowness. They're empty inside. They're miserable people. Understand this. No matter what a narcissist has, they're never satisfied. They're never happy. Nothing's ever enough because they're trying to fill that void of emptiness because they never got validated or they never felt control as a kid. And they're constantly trying to get that control and that validation in their life. And they never can, you know, they can never feel whole as a person. So that's their karma, you guys. That's their karma that, you know, the, they'll always find something wrong with something and, you know, they'll never be at peace. A narcissist will never be at peace. And that's another reason you should stay away from them because they will never give you peace. They will never give you peace. They will never give you validation. They are nothing but, you know, they don't, they don't like peace. They like adrenaline rush and to show that they are superior and they want their ego fed every which way. This is why they destroy birthdays. This is why they destroy holidays because they don't like to see other people happy and they want to be the center of um, attention. And if they're not the center of attention, they're going to try to ruin it in, you know, if they're dealing with a covert narcissist, they may put a face on at a holiday party or something, or they'll pick on something wasn't done right, or somebody didn't say hello to them. They'll find something wrong with something just to kill other people's joy. Because like I said, misery loves company. So you guys, again, no contact. If you have to deal with them, gray rock and never let the narcissist know they got to you. And your closure is the fact that you're a smart individual that understands what a narcissist is, and you don't need to hear a declaration from the narcissist that they did you wrong because you're so self-confident and self-assured within yourself that you already know what it is. And now you just cut that cord and you walk away. And you know, your karma to them is that they will never ever have a place in your life. Okay, that you will never, ever entertain that narcissist again. They are R.I.P. Okay, so I hope that helps you guys. If it does, hit the subscribe button and please share the podcast and have a great day. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio, where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? 
check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp 123 and also on Instagram the game exp 123 okay and have a great day